Good morning. Good to see you this morning. Also, welcome to our visitors. I ask that you remain uh, after service. Let us greet you and welcome you and your horses sit around and eat and enjoy fellowship with us. The church is having a crisis today all over the world. And uh, part of the, there are several reasons for those crises. One, there's a lack of teaching, there's a lack of adhering to the word. A lot of the pluralism is entering into the church. But also there is a, a desire for more members, getting more attention, more people, and uh, introduction of music in the worship service. There are churches of Christ who are now instrumental. Some of them you'll find as you travel around, they'll have uh, two services. One uh, introducing instrumental music and some that are called traditional worship. Uh, one of the more famous ones uh, was down in Dallas called uh, a church called Richland Hills. And the uh, minister down there, uh, after a few years, introduced the uh, thought of having instrumental music, and it uh, was real big to do for a long time. Quail Springs, Oklahoma City, is that the same thing? Uh, the man down in uh, Richland Hills uh, said that the Lord talked to him uh, while he was in the pulpit one day. And that instrumental music was fine and he never needed to introduce that. And it took him seven years after that to finally introduce it to the congregation. It is an epidemic. And it is one of the unique things that, that separates us from the other religious bodies in the world is the fact that we do not have instruments of music. Instruments of music came into play in uh, almost a thousand years after the church was started. Uh, we sing the a cappella, which the translation of that word actually means as in the church. That's what that translates to me. That's how it was done, and you can read it in the history, history books, you can read it in Josephus if you want to, you can look back through time and you can find it. In the early church, there was no instruments of music. One of the arguments that a lot of people like to use in the uh, the religious world and debates concerning music is that in the New Testament the word solo is used by Paul. And that originally that word meant to pluck the strings of an instrument. But as that language grew and developed, by the time that the New Testament was written, it did not mean to pluck the string of an instrument, it meant to pluck the strings of the heart, your heart. So he uses that and common street language which called a Greek is to mean to pluck the strings of the heart through vocal cords of course to sing. So that is that argument is mute. When many of the people in the denominational world as time progressed and went on that they uh, uh, didn't like it in the early beginnings of the churches here in the, in the United States. Uh, introduction of the Methodist Church and the Baptist Church began in the 1609 and uh, I, I on Rhode Island, they didn't have instruments of music for a while. And in slowly as time progressed, even the Methodist preachers didn't want to hear the music in the church building. They said that it would have made an awful noise and it was disrespectful. They didn't want to have it. But as time progressed, more and more, and even towards the end of the uh, Civil War, that was one of the major debates that was taking place. And that's where we wound up with the Christian Church and the Church of Christ. The Christian Church would make a branch off from the Church of Christ and desire to have musical instruments. They may run state primarily to the north of the Mason Dixon line and the churches of Christ and all the conservative side state towards the south. And we go on and have even more history lessons on that if you want to, but uh, that's beside the point. The point is instruments of music were introduced by man. As time progressed, somewhere in the neighborhood of a thousand years, around the 10th century and up to the 15th century. And it began in the Roman Catholic Church. And Constantine, sent a, who was big on religion, as you know, uh, sent an organ to uh, the king and uh, it went from there. So it is not original with the church. But that aside, we need to be able to talk to people. 
We need to be able to help them to understand why we don't have instruments of music and use a biblical reference for that. Not just because it wasn't in the church in the beginning. They need to know and understand why. And we need to do exactly what the Bible says in teaching in love. Teach the truth in love. We're told to do that. <clears throat> so let's look at some scripture. Get your Bible with me. First of all, let's start. Let's go to... Um, Let's go to 1 Corinthians. <clears throat> and chapter 14, I believe it is. 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 15. Let's look here and see what Paul says. First of all, what is it then? I will pray in the Spirit. And I will pray with the understanding also. I will sing with the Spirit. And I will sing with the understanding also. He's talking about worship. He's talking about how to, to worship God. And the things that are done in the church. is the context of this lesson that God's presenting here. So he says, I will pray with the Spirit. I will sing with the Spirit. I will pray with understanding. Okay, so we're talking about the Spirit here. Why does He want to do it that way? Let's look back in Gospel John. Turn with me to Gospel John. Let's go to chapter 4. I hope you're writing these scriptures down. You can use these to help people that you know. Understand why we don't have these questions. Look at the... Verse 24, Gospel of John, chapter 4, verse 24. God is a spirit, and they that worship Him must worship Him in spirit and in truth. Okay, now we're getting to the heart of that. Now we're learning why did Paul say, I pray with the spirit, I pray with the understanding. I was also saying, sing with the understanding of the spirit. Now we understand why he's saying that. Why? Because to worship God, we must worship Him in spirit and in truth. Now, let's get even farther than What is this spirit of truth? What is he talking about? Some people in the denominational world will say, well, that's the Holy Spirit. Holy spirit. He's talking about the Holy Spirit. Is he really? Is that what he's really saying? Because they want to take it and run with it. Use that for a reason where they want to do want to do a lot of other things. We're speaking about singing right now, and musical instruments. So let's let the Bible answer that. Turn with me to John the two <coughs> Gospel of John chapter six. While we're in John, this is what John teaches some things. Gospel of John chapter six, verse thirty six. Or sixty three, I'm talking. Verse sixty three. It is the Spirit that quickeneth, makes alive. The flesh profiteth nothing. The words, listen to the words that I speak unto you, they are Spirit. And they are life. Did you hear that? The words. The Word of God is the Spirit. So when we're told to sing in the Spirit, pray in the Spirit, pray with understanding in the Spirit, it's talking about according to the Word of God. The Word of God is Spirit. Didn't it, didn't it also say something about worshiping in Spirit and in truth? Let's let John talk about that. Turn with me to the Gospel of John chapter 17. John chapter 17 and verse 17. Sanctify them. That means to take them, separate them, make holy, separate them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. Oh, isn't that interesting? We've had both references that God has made mention to us that we are to worship Him according to Spirit and in truth. And both of them have to do with the Word of God. That's our authority. Let's go even farther than that. 
What does it say over Colossians? Let's turn to Colossians. Wait a Colossians chapter 3. Colossians chapter 3, verse 17. And whatsoever you do in word, that's what I say, what I speak, what I sing, whatever, whatsoever you do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father by Him. In the name of the Lord Jesus means by His authority. So everything that I am authorized to do, I do because God said to do it. Not because some man said to do it. All that I do in word or deed, I am to do according to the word of God, in spirit and in truth. So there's the foundation of it, right there. That's our authority. And all scriptures give by inspiration from God, isn't it? Well, Timothy tells us it is. All scripture is from God, is profitable for the doctrine, for proof, for instruction and in righteousness, that the man of God may be what? Thoroughly furnished, completely furnished, not needing anything unto what? All good works. And what are good works? The things that God has commanded us to do and desires us to do, things done in spirit and in truth. That includes our worship. So this is my authority. This is what I have to do. Well, there are some in the denominational world who come along and say, well, well, yeah, that's right. But the Bible says we can use musical instruments. Does it really? Does it really say that? Well, yeah, it does. And one of the most favorite verses, turn with me, is where? Found in Psalms 150. Let's turn to Psalms 150. And let's look at what it says. And look carefully at it. Psalms 150. And here's where you're going to find that they want to claim rights to use musical instruments. Praising the Lord, praise God in the sanctuary. Praise Him in the permanent of His power. Praise Him for His mighty acts. Praise Him according to His excellent greatness. Praise Him with the sound of the trumpet. Praise Him with the psaltery and the harp. Praise Him with the timbrel and the dance. Praise Him with stringed instruments and organs. Praise Him upon the loud cymbals. Praise Him upon the high sounding cymbals. And everything, here's the key verse, listen. Let everything that hath breath praise the Lord. Praise you, the Lord. There's nothing wrong with this verse. It's in the Bible. It's from God. Because God authored the Bible. But does that give you the authority to use musical instruments? Is that right? That last verse says, Let everything that hath breath praise the Lord. It is the, the objects of creation that have breath that praise God, not the musical instruments. Where did these musical instruments come from? Why are they here? Well, they like to use the Old Testament. They like to rely on it. This is part of the old law. We're not under the old law anymore. We know that. We understand that. There are two covenants. There's three dispensations that man has lived under. The patriarchal dispensation, the Mosaic, and the law of Christ. Christian dispensation. Three. The only one that's functional now is the New Testament, the law of Christ, the Christian dispensation. The patriarchal law lasted from Adam all the way to the cross. You remember Moses' father-in-law was a priest. He worshipped under the patriarchal law. He was a priest of God, yes, but under the patriarchal law, not the Mosaic law. The law of Moses was given to those that were at Mount Sinai, those that were there only, the Scriptures tell us. To those that be here today at Mount Sinai, and who were they? They were the Hebrews. 
last remaining tribe that was the largest was the tribe of Judah. That's where they get their name, Jew. They just contracted it and called them Jews. That's the Mosaic Law. It was given only to them. The rest of the world didn't worship under that law. Could they? They had to go through the process to be allowed to do so. Other than that, the rest of the world didn't. This is part of the Mosaic Law. How do we know that? Turn with me to John 15, verse 25. Gospel John, chapter 15, and verse 25. Gospel John, chapter 15, verse 25. And this cometh to pass that the word might be fulfilled that is written in their law. Listen carefully what Jesus is the one talking here. He says, but this cometh to pass that the word might be fulfilled that is written in their law. Who is he talking about? The Jews. It's written in their law. In his quote. They hated me without a clause. Where do we find that? That is in Psalms chapter 35. In two other places it's quoted in Psalms. So the Psalms is part of the Mosaic Law. The Mosaic Law is done away with when, the, when Christ died on the cross. Colossians 2.14, Ephesians 2.15. That's just two quick, easy verses. He was taken and nailed to the cross. Done away with. If that's not enough, we can look at the book of Hebrews where it talks about if, no place had been, uh, if nothing had been wrong with the first covenant, then no place should have been sought for the second. But we find that Jesus died that His law, His covenant, the New Testament, might become law. That's what Hebrews tells us. It is the law binding today, not the Mosaic law. So even if they want to quote the Psalms and say, look, it says that you can use musical instruments is it null and void today because that law is not binding today. The only law that is binding is the New Testament law that we live by and live under where we have forgiveness of sins and the promise and hope of eternal life that only the New Testament gives. But if that's not enough, if they still want to follow the Old Testament law, then let's see how difficult that would be. Turn with me to Second Chronicles chapter 34. You know, if they want to do that, they want to live under the old law, then everything binding under that old law has to be followed. You can't just pick and choose what part of the old law you want to follow. Follow Paul tells us if you err in one point of the law, you're guilty of the law, therefore your punishment is death. They don't want that. Well, the part of the old law is we need the ashes of the red heifer. We need the golden candlesticks. We need the ark of the covenant. We need the tribe of Levi. Because only the priests from the tribe of Levi could take it and operate in the temple. We need the temple. We look at all the things that we don't have today that they want to say they want to follow. You have to follow all of it if you want to follow. You can't just say, well, I like the instrument. And stick with it. Let's look at 2 Chronicles chapter 34. And verse 12. Now listen carefully. This is just one scripture. There are more than this. I want to show you what is involved in worshiping in the temple. Verse 12 of chapter 2 Chronicles 34. And the men did the work faithfully. The, the men. And the overseers of them were Jehath and Obadiah, the Levites. Those were the priests. And the sons of Marari and Zechariah and Shulam, of the sons of Kohathites, to set it forward. And other of the Levites, all that could, could skill of instruments of music. The only ones allowed to play musical instruments were men in the tribe of Levi. 
because the musical instruments used to worship God, and the worship of God was performed in the temple. So all of you ladies, I'm sorry, you can't participate. But if we're going to follow the Old Testament law and we want to include it, then we have to follow it, right? That leaves all the women out because only the Levites could operate in the temple and do the functions in the temple, and they were all men. Let alone that, now where did the musical instruments come from? Did God create those? No. They were created by God. They were created by man. Turn with me to 1 Chronicles chapter 23. Let's see where these instruments of music came from. See, David is the one that introduced them. David was the king. David wanted to worship God. He was the one that introduced the music. There were no musical instruments until David did that. God allowed him that freedom because he was the king. And God had set him up over the kingdom. First Chronicles chapter 23. And let's look at verse 5. <clears throat> Moreover, 4,000 were porters, and 4,000 praised the Lord with the instruments which I made, said David. To praise therewith. Who made them? David did. Who introduced them? David did. Then we turn over, and we can turn over to Amos chapter 8. And if you can see, I'm just doing the Bible study with you here, just flip back and forth. We can find in Amos where they were trying to worship God and they fashioned instruments of music, and God got angry. He said, Take from before me the sound of thy vials, those who create music after the fashion of David. God did not command it. Man introduced it. Man introduced it into the, into the worship service. And I can even give you specific dates if we want to get that technical. That's not necessary for this discussion. Man introduced it, not God. But let's look a little bit further. Does God really want to be worshipped that way? Does God want to be worshipped with men's hands? Turn with me to Acts chapter 17. And listen carefully to what God's saying here. Acts chapter 17. Paul's teaching. And listen to what he says. Look in verse, uh, let's just start with verse 24. Acts 17, verse 24. God that made the world and all things therein, seeing that he is Lord of heaven and earth, dwelleth not in temples made with hands, neither is worshipped with men's hands. As though he needed anything, see, he giveth to all life and breath and all things. Are you hearing what he's saying? He's not worshipped with men's hands. Name one musical instrument that's not designed and built by a man. Name one musical instrument that man in some fashion does not have to play using his hands or some other part of his body. Remember what I read in Psalms 5, 150? All things that have breath, let them praise and show me one musical instrument created by a man that has its own breath. Those don't exist. Now see, every, every argument I have presented to you has biblical basis. These are biblical arguments. These are not opinions. We don't have musical instruments, beloved, because they're not authorized by God to be played in His worship. God wants His creation to worship Him. You are His creation. He has given you the ability in your own body to worship Him. The Bible tells us that God wills that men worship Him everywhere. 
A lot of these musical instruments that people want to use, you have to plug them into the wall. You can't take all these musical instruments everywhere, but God says you can worship me everywhere. Why? Because you have within you all the instruments that God wants to praise him. But let's get even more detail. This law that we have been given, beloved, is a law written to each and every one of us. Every single person in here, every single person in the world is required to obey this law. Everything that is written in there, you must do to be pleasing to God. You have to answer for yourself. You have to worship God. You have to pray. You have to take the take of the Lord's Supper. You have to make the decision to be baptized. All these, nobody can do these things for you or on your behalf. You must make the decision in your own heart and mind to follow God and obey Him. You do it individually. Now, if God authorized a musical instrument to be played, then every one of us would have to play. Let's just take something as simple as a piano. A lot of churches have pianos. If God authorized the use of a piano, every single person in here would have to play that piano during worship service. Why? Because you are the one worshiping God. We are here collectively as the body of Christ, but we each worship God individually. We're judged individually. We serve individually. Are you hearing me? Do you understand? Whatever God tells you to do in here, you do. You can't have someone up here worshiping God, let's say with that piano that God said He wanted to use. Up here playing the piano and you sit back there and enjoying it because that, by definition, is being entertained. The one worshiping would be the one playing the piano, not you. Do you understand? This is God's law for you to follow. Instruments of music are played by individuals. If God authorized and commanded for you to play a musical instrument, you would have to play it as part of your worship service. And that's not so. God said, those who come to me must worship me in spirit and in truth. And we've already established in John 4, 24, that the, in John 6, 63, and John 17, 17, that the worship of God must be done by this. This is the spirit. This is the truth that God's commanding. Nowhere in here are musical instruments authorized by the Lord's covenant today. No. So why do we not have musical instruments, beloved? Because just as the Lord said, we are each our priests. We each offer up spiritual sacrifice, not physical. An instrument is physical. It's mechanical. We offer spiritual sacrifices to God. That's our job. God is a spirit. We must worship Him according to His desire. And he desires us to worship Him. If we did not worship Him, who would? God tells you who would do that. He clearly states in here that if He was not being praised, the Lord Himself said that. It's in Luke. He said, if I, you were not praising me, these rocks would praise me. And I'm paraphrasing what he said. In other words, God's creation, if man wasn't doing it, the whole creation would have been praising for who he is. He is God. He is sovereign. It is his law. We're not here to entertain ourselves. We're not here to worship and have fun worshiping and making joyful experiences because that's the kind of experience I want to have. No, we're here for one purpose. 
And that is to worship and glorify God. And the only way that we can do that is to do so the way He commanded us to do it. He's God. He deserves that much respect, nonetheless. Because God said so, we do. That's one of the catchphrases we'll call them for the Church of Christ. God said it, I believe that that settles it. If it's in the Bible, we do. If it's not, we don't. Some of the arguments are, they say, well, it doesn't say I can't play it on an instrument of music. Why would God have to go to that much trouble? You know how big this book would become? Would God put in there all the negatives? I don't want you to play a piano. I don't want you to play a drum set. I don't want you to play a flute. And all this on and on and on. All the things He didn't want you to do. Wouldn't it be so much easier just to say what I told you to do? That sounds it. We worship God individually, beloved. Now, there's a whole series of lessons I can give you more information on this. Let's, let's leave it at this. We worship God according to His Word because we love Him. And that's what He's commanded us to do. Do those people out in the world worshiping with a piano, do they love God? Well, I'm sure they probably in their mind and heart they believe that they do. This is not a, a sermon to bash them. It's to help explain why we don't have musical instruments. So you, in turn, can help them understand why. It's not a game. Worship with God is not a game. It's a serious one. Whenever we introduce something into the worship of God that God does not authorize, it is an offense to God. God, you didn't know what you were asking. I know better. No, that's not right. That is not right. The two sons of Aaron were destroyed with fire immediately because they added something to the worship of God that He didn't authorize. Well, He didn't say, don't use that fire over there. Now, I don't want you to use that particular fire. No, he just told them what he wanted them to do. And they chose to go into a different route and consume them with fire immediately. If you do a study, beloved, the Levites and were the priests in the temple. If you do a study of all the rules and laws, and that's what the majority of the covenant was, or rules and guidelines that the Levites had to follow. Consequences of error, doing something against the law of God, was death. That's how serious God is when it comes to His Word. He is the same today He was then. He is serious about His worship today. We can't take it lightly. We can't, in a sense, say, God, you didn't know what you were doing. Let me show you the better way. I don't just do it the way God says to do it. And leave it alone. After all, He says, if you love me, you'll keep my commandments. His commandments are to sing. Ephesians 5 19. Washington tells us to sing. In other words, it tells us to sing. Matter of fact, He tells us three particular types of songs to sing. We sing spiritual songs. We sing praise songs, and we sing songs that edify one another. Three types of songs that we will sing, and we do that. That's all we're supposed to do because we are God's creation. We are His temple. We are the priests. We worship according to God's law. That's not hard to understand, is it? I hope I helped you to understand. There's lots more. I didn't even follow my outline. And I wanted to make it simple so that you could understand it. And you can go teach somebody. And this sermon is going to be up on YouTube. You can my YouTube channel down there so you can see it. You can show it to somebody. We really love God. We're going to respect Him and honor Him and do it the way that He's asked us to do. Because He's 
because we love it. And we want our worship to be accepted. If you're here this morning and you're not a child of God, but you would want to become a child of God, you know, put your Lord on the baptism, now is an opportunity to do that. If you're here this morning and you have erred in some way, and you need the prayers of the church, you want to join the congregation, you know, whatever need in Christ you have, we're here to serve you. We encourage you. Please come all together. We stand in front of you.